Hello, I'm Zonafit and welcome to another video on the TechQuest. A while ago I reviewed the absolutely awful AMD A6 9500E processor. I didn't really like it at all. Since then I've received one whole request to take a look at a better Bristol Ridge processor. And that processor is the AMD Athlon X4950. I actually found this in a not so local computer exchange and after a lengthy bus ride home I got it for the cheap price of £7, merely a couple of quid more than the A6 9500E. But what exactly did I get? The AMD Athlon X4 950, to which I will refer to as the Athlon 950 from here on in, is a quad-core processor based on the same architecture as the FX chips and their FM2 revisions. In fact, the Athlon 950 is a tweaked version of an FM2 processor I have tested before. It has merely been reworked for the AM4 socket and to support DDR4 memory. Released around mid-2017, it's actually a little bit difficult to nail down its original launch price, although around £60 seems to be the roughest average figure from user reviews at the time. For that money, you get 4 cores clocked in at a decent 3.5GHz, boosting up to 3.8GHz in ideal conditions, and support for DDR4 2400MHz memory on a platform that would, in my opinion, become one of the most consumer-friendly tech platforms ever. Sounds pretty great so far, doesn't it? There is, however, a pretty big but coming along here now. All is not as it seems. It might be possible to mistake the Athlon 950 for an early, early Ryzen processor, but beneath that heat spreader lies something different. Remember AMD's FX series? Well, that's what the Athlon 950 is. This one has been tweaked a little bit and is based on much new iterations of the FX's architecture, but at its heart, it's still an FX chip. I've paired this Athlon 950 up with the same hardware I used to test the A6-9500E, a Gigabyte A320 board, 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM clocked in at 2400MHz speed, and I've topped it all off with a GeForce GTX 1650. I was initially going to use an RTX 3060 on this, but after you see the results today you'll come to the same conclusion that I did, and that would have been merely wasted watts. The full specs of the system used today are on screen now, and one thing to note, these Athlons will not work on later AM4 chipsets such as B550, only the 3 series AM4 chipset supports them, and I'd still double check if I was buying one of these for an AM4 board. Once again, I'm going for playable rather than absolute performance, but you'll see why shortly. GTX 1650 I'm using today is a decent card for this test, so without further delay, let's get to it. I'm going out of my mind in excitement. First up, as always, is Fallout 4. At 1080p and using the medium preset, Fallout 4 was playable, but we were just bogged down by poor CPU performance, something that will become a recurring theme. The GTX 1650 isn't the most powerful card in the world, but it's still a 1080p card with sensible settings, and the lackluster performance we are seeing here is entirely CPU based. It's okay, but yeah, not ideal. Borderlands 2 was a better performer overall. A 1080p high, with a frame rate capped to 60fps, the Athlon 950 did actually see us towards that 60fps target most of the time, although the occasional drop is to be expected. It was smooth enough though, and given Borderlands has always seen middling results in older AMD processors of this type, it's not a bad result overall, and you can absolutely play the game like this. Dying Light is next. At 900p and using the medium preset capped 30fps, the Athlon 950 does just about deliver an Xbox One level of performance here, although it isn't without frequent dips. Looking back at the footage in review, if you played the Xbox One version of this when it came out, then the performance here is remarkably similar to that console. So if you played it fine on the Xbox One, you're going to get by fine here too. This is where things start to go downhill now. Grand Theft Auto did not do well on the Athlon at all, with all of the hallmark problems that plague older dual-core processors seemingly raising their head on the quad-core Athlon. Even if for a second the frame rate was okay, the sheer amount of texture popping makes this entirely unplayable, and this is all down to the Athlon 950. The CPU is constantly at 100% usage, and the Athlon just doesn't have anything else to give, resulting in an unsatisfactory experience reminiscent of how this performs on older dual-core processors. Our descent into oblivion continues with the Division 2, at 1080p and using the medium preset, we once again see a massive CPU bottleneck during gameplay here. On a personal note, I have several thousand hours in The Division 2, and I don't ever recall seeing performance so poor that the world doesn't even load in around you, and this was despite the game running from an SSD. There's no two ways about this, the Athlon 950 cannot keep up in more intensive games. Counter Strike 2 is next. First of all, thank you to Bjorn Toft for the tip on getting MSI Afterburner working correctly. It's appreciated. At 1080p and using the low preset, we once again saw a rather poor performance as the Athlon was completely maxed out. I did aim for 60fps here, but as you can see we are just nowhere near a reasonable level of performance at all. For comparison, this actually performs worse here than on a Ryzen 2400G using integrated graphics, and by quite some margin, and these processors weren't a million years apart. Metro Last Light makes a good attempt to pull us out of the gutter. At 1080p and using the higher preset capped 60fps, we actually saw a decent level of performance here. Yes, it's an Xbox 360 era game, but it's still pretty demanding on hardware, and at least the Athlon was able to see a fairly consistent experience. 
It wasn't perfect, but it stayed at that 60 FPS mark long enough and minor dips here and there are not an issue. A solid performance overall. Personal favourite are mine Frostpunk, and a bit of an odd result here. At 1080p and using the medium preset, game performance was remarkably similar to last video's 2400G, but this shouldn't have been the case. I've long said that Frostpunk cares more about your GPU than your CPU, but both worked together to deliver gameplay that fell well short of what I was expecting with no obvious reason for it. Occasionally we would see 30fps and it was still kinda playable, but this one was particularly disappointing, as I expected better here. Moving on, Payday 2 was at least solid. At 1080p and using the medium preset, capped 60fps. The Athlon 950 did actually manage a good level of performance here, resulting in something very playable in a video where the Athlon has struggled right the way through. Payday 2 remained at 60fps more often than not, with only very minor deviations as heists started to go really hectic. A good perform overall, but you should expect no different from a 360 era game. Both Red Dead's now. Starting with the first, it was a mixed bag. At 1080p and using the default preset, the outpack would see a game that was very playable, with a frame rate ranging from 30 exactly all the way up to the mid 40s. In the wild, the game was a pretty enjoyable experience on the Athlon 950. And then we hit the towns like Armadillo, and that previously okay frame rate just tanked into the low 20s. It's a game of two halves in terms of performance, and if you can get through the treacle in towns, then you'll just about have a decent time here overall. Moving on to Red Dead Redemption 2, I won't spend too much time on Red Dead 2, it was simply unplayable at any settings. At 1080p and using the medium preset, a level I know the GTX 1650 can do fine, the Athlon dragged us all the way down to an entirely unsatisfying experience that, unlike the first, didn't even show the slightest possibility of being playable. It was a complete write-off. Left 4 Dead 2 was actually excellent on the Athlon 950. At 1080p with all settings set to max, the Athlon delivered a near flawless experience here in what I think is the best performing game of them all today. It ran smooth with absolutely no issues throughout my playthrough of the streets level, I always try and replay the same level while I'm doing my benchmark videos. I did expect this to run well though, however given some of the mixed results we've seen so far today, I wouldn't take anything for granted, so it's good to see that Left 4 Dead 2 at least books a trend in how our games are performed today. And finally, The Witcher 3. At 720p using the low preset and a 30fps cap, we actually saw something kind of playable. The Athlon 950 did deliver 30fps a good chunk of the time, but there were frequent drops into the low 20s that will interrupt your experience. I played for around 25 minutes on The Witcher, and I just about got by with it fine, although I suspect this will change when you start hitting the busy areas, so I'd add a massive maybe to the game's overall performance. From what I played, while I played it though, it was fine. Moving on to day-to-day -day usage, that was also okay, albeit a little slow. Extracting files in particular seemed really slow, but general browsing was good enough. I did also run Cinebench R15, but I must have caught a dose of the Athlon's performance, as I didn't make a note of its CB score. It was certainly closer to the bottom of that list than the top, but I'll do better next time, guys. And that's a wrap for today. A little while ago I tested the AMD A6-9500E, it was objectively not a very good processor, and it was a miserable time using it. In that regard, the Athlon is much much better than 9500E, but we are still comparing two very slow processors. In gaming, the Athlon 950 struggled to deliver any solid results in almost anything we tested today, although 360-era games certainly perform better than newer games. At £7, I cannot recommend this processor. I couldn't even recommend it at £1 for a few reasons. Firstly, you have to have a 300 series motherboard to actually run these, and for some reason 300 series board seems to hold their value better than most AM4 boards, at least in the UK, and you can find much cheaper B450 boards that don't support the Athlon, but more modern features in general. In fact, I have a video coming of a board I paid just £20 for at retail, and that makes tracking down a 300 series board to use this Athlon pretty redundant. Secondly, the performance is just not good enough. I reviewed the Pentium G3258 recently, and I would reasonably argue that even that is a better processor than the Athlon 950, and that's considerably older than the Athlon 950 is. The redeeming thing about the Athlon 950 is that it works on the AM4 socket, and even though the Athlon itself is disappointing, AM4 as a platform is, in my opinion, one of the best CPU sockets ever made, and the AM4 motherboard will grant you access to years of much better processors than the Athlon 950. As I sit down and write what I'm saying here, I realize I have a Zen-based Athlon 3000G, one of the Athlons you can get on the AM4 socket, and that's the one you want above the quad-core Athlon 950. It's a little more, around 15 quid, but it will prove infinitely more capable a processor than the Bristol Ridge-based Athlon 950. Keep an eye out for my next video, where I'm going to be reviewing the Intel Core i5-2400S, a processor that cost me just 10 pence. I'm expecting really good things. I've been Zonal Fear on the Tech Quest. 
Thank you very much for watching the Athlon X4950, and until next time, bye bye.